Can everybody see that? Great. Thank you for the thumbs up. <laughs> okay, fantastic. So today we'll be, um, Maddie and I will be talking about practicing community care with fourth year mentors. And my name is Jade, um, Jade Krishan, and I'll be speaking with Madison Shields here. And we're both graduating students from the Department of Film and Media at Queens. Um, and we pursued an internship this semester with uh, another co-intern, uh, Andrew, who unfortunately couldn't be here today. Uh, I'm just, for accessibility reasons, going to introduce my Zoom background. Um, I have a bookcase in the back. There's a white cabinet in the background. I'm wearing a black shirt and I have dark hair and clear glasses. And I'll let Maddie do the same here as well. Hi, so um, I'm Maddie. Um, I'm wearing a yellow shirt. I have black glasses and brown hair and I'm sitting in front of a beige-ish bookcase. Awesome. So um, I'm just going to introduce uh, this document right here called Student Perspectives, um, Supplementing Current Film and Media Pedagogies. And so this is a document that we produced uh, at the end of the semester to encapsulate all that we achieved during our internship. So throughout the internship, we aim to build accountable learning spaces that pr try and promote critical thinking in regards to how we've learned in the past and how we would like to carry on learning. And this was based on our own um, experiences in the film and media department over the past four years as undergraduate students. Um, and so what we hope to achieve with this document was to propose a supplementary mode of learning for undergrad students, um, both in and out of the film and media department. So namely, we took on the role of so-called, I guess, fourth year mentors here. Um, and we arranged a series of screenings, academic resource sessions and community care sessions to encourage second level students. So second years to engage further with their course content. Um, and so these two images here are taken directly from our document and they show two of many projects that we worked on this past semester and really over the year in our fourth year. Um, the first initiative seen here on the left proposes the replacement and recontextualization of posters around the film building at the Isabel Bader uh, Center for Performing Arts. And the second on the right shows a 12 week mock syllabus that we wrote and curated collectively as a group uh, to present films that we feel deserve more academic consideration, whether they are pushing the envelope in just the art form itself, or if they serve to decolonize the academic film canon that exists currently in the film and media department. And I'll leave it off to Maddie to introduce a third project that we worked on, which is our main focus here in our presentation, which is peer mentorship. Great, uh, thanks Jade. So like Jade mentioned, um, we're gonna be focusing on the peer mentorship part of the uh, student engagement projects that we were engaging with this semester. So um, to start off, here's a guiding question on the screen that we felt was helpful in approaching this internship. So that question is, what does it mean to extend inclusive learning practices beyond the classroom? So answering a really big question like this can get pretty complex, but we're coming at it from three angles. So number one is adopting inclusivity as a mindset and in turn creating informal, safe and accountable learning spaces designed with community care in mind. Um, the second is emphasizing and embracing our roles as caregivers and mentors as opposed to authority figures. And the third is acting as anchors around which students can orientate themselves. So when we're talking about that, we're thinking of learning as relational and drawing attention to the fact that students are part of a wider community who can offer resources to each other in a learning process. Um, and essentially in thinking of ourselves as anchors, we're attempting to role model these relationships and the conversations that we're hoping to see in the department. Yeah, and so to elaborate on that, um, our first goal with the internship in general and specifically with peer mentorship was to both document and decolonize the current academic film canon, like I mentioned, in the Queen's Film and Media Department. And this means acknowledging the potential biases that we have that have informed the department's pedagogical approaches um, towards critical analysis in film um, and then trying to prompt uh, professors to adapt a more um, to adapt to reflect a more diverse experience in the classroom. Uh, the second goal touches on carving out safe casual spaces where students at both a lower and upper level can freely debate their opinions on film philosophy, theory, and social ideology. So reinforcing that a more casual environment 
um, allows students to focus on their personal development as it benefits them and as they see fit. And our last goal is to work with students who might feel overwhelmed by um, academic or non-academic expectations, and that applies in both the remote and in-person learning environment as well. Right. So um, in practice, this looked like arranging one-on-one -on -one sessions, group sessions, and online sessions, and that was to account for various time zones um, with the students to build on their current knowledge of course content, as well as focusing on specific projects. Um, this encouraged collaboration between peers while also facilitating discussion that would further their engagement with the course material. So some examples of things we did is a thesis development workshop, a midterm review session, and also having some pseudo office hours to offer that time for one-on-one -on -one help. Uh, we also offered positive reinforcement and constructive feedback on initial drafts of creative or academic documents as a way for students to build their ideas in a non-judgmental environment to prepare to maybe bring it to a TA or a professor. Uh, also, we facilitated regular screenings in smaller group settings to develop comfort using film language and to build confidence in the ability to discuss film at that higher academic level. Um, lastly, we created and moderated online group chats for each class, um, allowing students to directly get in contact with us to seek help or to contact each other. Um, especially with online classes, it's made it particularly difficult for classmates to reach out to each other and to collaborate. So we thought that this was an important step in making space for those connections to be made. Yeah, and to elaborate a little further on some of the benefits that Maddie touched on already, um, a benefit to building these sorts of relationships is to deconstruct the hierarchies within learning. So in doing this, um, Maddie kind of touched on this, but we hope to build confidence and capacity of the students uh, working with them to take charge of their own learning uh, instead of just plainly instructing what their next step should be. And a part of that is decentering ego. So we're trying to look at students as both learners and as teachers and recognizing that inclusion is a mindset that we're trying to develop as educators uh, rather than just a series of actions. Um, and so despite our experience as upper level mentors, um, we're prompted to understand that even, at, even though we are resources, our word still isn't final. Um, and so that introduces a sense of humility into the teaching process um, and thinking of teaching as like a sort of exchange rather than just a top-down procedure. Um, so trying to learn what we have to contribute um, and trying to understand that our knowledge is subject to criticism and change as well. Um, another thing in that benefits students as well as us is that we're offering a point of connection to our peers and to the department um, and just as a personal anecdote here, by making ourselves available to these students, I personally received a few messages, whether through our online group chat or just um, as a private message through some students that highlighted some difficulties in understanding the technical jar jargon needed for some assignments. And this was from several international students who reached out to me because they felt comfortable. Um, and I made it clear that I have knowledge of both Cantonese and Mandarin. And so I helped out a few students in managing um, certain questions and rewording them or offering translations if I could, um, just to make the material a bit more approachable. And that's something that we hoped we benefited the students in this way. Um, and some of the instructor benefits, I suppose, like superficially speaking, um, we kind of were able to offer streamlined feedback to Dan Vena, our professor who was supervising us throughout this internship um, about whether the students really even understood or engaged with the course material at all. Um, and this was um, throughout remote learning where there was kind of a separation or students didn't feel comfortable turning on their camera, et cetera. Uh, we could also gauge student needs and their stress levels by creating a, a space that was a little bit more vulnerable than maybe your typical classroom space. Um, and I guess on a more philosophical basis, we are trying to establish or reestablish teaching as communal. So understanding that it is humility driven, it is flexible and subject to change. Um, and it is really a communal experience for everyone. Um, and in that, we're trying to prompt, um, I guess, instructors to adopt kindness and humility as guiding principles in the classroom. Right. Um, thanks for all of that. So it, while we did reach quite a bit of success with this project, it's important to acknowledge that there were challenges. And um, one of those bigger ones was getting a large amount of students to attend the screenings or the review sessions. And um, while our numbers 
did go up towards the end and we gained a little bit more traction. And those who attended the screenings and the sessions were very actively engaged. It was a little bit difficult to get a large number of people to come considering the size of the cohort. Um, additionally, having some events online due to COVID was interesting because it was both a challenge and an agent for success. Um, the online format was definitely a hindrance to the screenings and um, that showed in our first screening attendance, which was unfortunately quite low. Um, however, it was really helpful to be able to offer people an online option for students who were unable to be there in person or were uncomfortable for COVID or any other reason. So thinking of next steps, we're hoping that this project can be a next step towards creating a more empathetic and community-based place of learning by connecting the film and media community at Queens across years and building a more cohesive department. We also wanna use this experience to think critically about colonial pedagogies in the classroom and to encourage instructors and others within the department to look at these traditional educational structures as a site of change and something that can evolve and the, the way we look at best practices can evolve. Um, we also wanna prompt others to acknowledge the work of their mentors and teachers as those who inform your own ways of thinking by extending their practices of inclusivity in the classroom. And that's really just to encourage that environment of community care. And that's something we tried to do with our mentors and teachers. Uh, so the format of the student's perspective document that Jade was talking about earlier could be useful pedagogically for faculty and students alike. And uh, we hope that future students in the Queens Film and Media Department might choose to implement these projects as part of their own internship, or maybe that the department will make this type of internship avail available um, annually for students. Uh, so a PDF version of that proposal document will hopefully be made available in the near future if you'd like to read more about our efforts this semester or throughout the year. And um, maybe you can use it as a guide for implementing your own student mentorship in your uh, own department. So thank you so much for listening and we are looking forward to hearing all your questions. Yeah, thank you.